So is it better to live in Kelowna or is it better to live in Vernon? I'm going to give you all the data you need to answer that question for yourself shortly and we're starting now. I'm Lisa Salt with Remax Vernon Salt Fowler and so many times we're asked what it's like to live in Vernon versus Kelowna and where it's better to live. I mean, obviously the answer of course is Vernon. Now nah, that's not necessarily the case. The answer is it depends. Today we're going to look at the pros and cons of both cities and before we do, please make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and like this video as we're posting new videos every single week. On this channel we give you the straight goods on Vernon and the Okanagan, our ultimate four seasons paradise. Whether you're moving in nine days or 90 days or just curious about the area we call home, be sure to call, text or email us and just add salt. At the end of this video I'll tell you how to download our free relocation package so be sure to stick around. So the answer to the age-old question about where is it better to live, Kelowna or Vernon, is it depends. It depends on where you stand on these seven factors. Number one, amenities. What is your expectation of amenities? Is it super, super important for you to have a Costco in the same city as you? Or is it okay to drive 38 minutes? How about Lululemon? Or is it okay to drive 44 minutes? Because that's how far it is to downtown Kelowna from downtown Vernon. Kelowna is a much larger city than Vernon. Population just shy of 150,000 in 2021 versus Vernon at 43,000. The whole central Okanagan is around 225,000 and the north Okanagan is 92,000-ish. Vernon initially was to be the center of the Okanagan, however, that all changed and now it's Kelowna. Kelowna definitely wins the race for the most strip malls. So the question for you is whether you're okay to drive to some of the few missing amenities, Costco, Lululemon, etc., or whether you want to have them close to your back door. Number two is size. Kelowna is larger. Kelowna has a big city feel. This relates to factor number one, but it's a little bit different. We're looking at it on a broad scale now. We're looking at Kelowna being like a city. It's like a city, whereas Vernon has more of a, like a large town feel. And of course, with being larger comes pluses and minuses. The big plus is employment. There's stuff to do. There's nightlife in Kelowna. The big minus is gridlock. I mean, we gotta be honest, tourism in the summertime fills up both cities. Getting through either one of them, fighting traffic in August is crap. However, to get through Vernon from one end to the other, on the highway is 1.8 kilometers. On a good day, it takes five minutes, according to Google. Kelowna, to get across the city from, say, Costco to the bridge, 6.2 kilometers and takes 12 minutes on a good day. I know you guys from Vancouver and Calgary are saying, what's your problem? Big deal. 10 minutes, 24 minutes, who cares? I commute for an hour. And I get that. I do. I used to as well when I lived in Vancouver. I commuted for a long time. <laughs> However, I will warn you, living in the Okanagan, give us one year to convert you and then you too will be incensed when you have to wait more than one traffic light to get through. Unbelievable. Just wait. Mark my words. Number three is the waterfront. Kelowna's on the water. Vernon is not. Vernon has three lakes. Kelowna has one. And since more is always better, then Vernon definitely wins a prize for the most lakes. Now Vernon's on the north end of Okanagan Lake, while Kelowna is basically in the middle, so both cities share that one lake. However, admittedly, Kelowna makes better use of Okanagan Lake because it plopped the downtown right on the lake versus making people drive for 6.3 kilometers or eight minutes to get from downtown to the lake on the Vernon side. However, in Vernon, you do have options. You can also go eight minutes from downtown to get to Kalamalka Lake, or you could choose to go eight minutes to get to Swan Lake. I literally just Googled that today and it's eight minutes from downtown to every lake in Vernon. So Kelowna would win on lake access being right downtown. It's really nice, got lots of amenities on the lake, but then Vernon would win for assortment, assortment of lakes. I think Vernon also wins because back in the 60s, National Geographic rated Kalamalka Lake as one of the 10 most beautiful lakes in the world. So eat that, Kelowna. Number four, ski hills. From downtown Vernon to Silver Star, it's 27 minutes. And from downtown Kelowna to Big White, it's an hour. Both are fabulous ski hills. 
As for snow, Silver Star is a lower mountain, so you don't get the whiteouts that you do at Big White. Now apparently the village at Big White is at about the same altitude as the peak of Silver Star. Big White also needs more snow to open. And there's more runs at Silver Star because you can ski the backside of the mountain. According to what I read online from skiers, the weather and the visibility are much better at Silver Star as well. And the ski area is largely below the tree line, which affords protection from the elements. And it's closer. Number five, house prices and rentals. Okay, so let's talk about rentals first. Both cities have a huge shortage of rentals, so I would say that they're neck and neck there. You can't rent anything in either place, hardly. House prices, well, the benchmark single family house price in Vernon is 703,500 for November month end December versus 978,500 for Kelowna. So that's a 39% difference, huge difference. Saying that, Kelowna does have a much larger selection of higher end homes than Vernon does. So if you were looking in the higher end, you would have more to choose from. Number six, and this is a big one, speculation tax. This is where as of right now, Vernon really shines. The dreaded speculation tax. Now this tax is an annual provincial tax paid by residential property owners and it affects Kelowna and West Kelowna. So not all areas of the central Okanagan, you know, it doesn't affect Lake Country, etc., but it does affect those two, Kelowna, West Kelowna. Tax was designed to discourage speculative buyers and people leaving properties vacant in the more urban type centers. Now that tax is significant. It's 0.5% of the property's assessed value annually if you're a Canadian, but it's 2% for foreign owners. And Vernon, North Okanagan, doesn't have that. Kelowna and West Kelowna, they do. Number seven, let's look at the temperature. This is another area where we can say unequivocally that it depends. It depends on whether you want it two degrees hotter or whether you want it two degrees cooler. Two degrees cooler can sound pretty good on a heat dome day, but it sounds bad in a blizzard. Vernon has always been approximately two degrees cooler on any given day. Kelowna is approximately two degrees warmer than Vernon on any given day. It will snow a bit earlier in Vernon in the winter. Snow will be gone a little bit later in the winter, but you'll fry your face off a little bit sooner in Kelowna in the summer. Depends on what you like. So really both places are beautiful four season paradises. I don't know if you'd base your decision solely on these seven factors, but those are the main seven factors that most people do. And the final decision is up to you. Now be sure to download our free Vernon relocation package below and learn more about what the Okanagan, specifically the North Okanagan has to offer.